This is my home. This is my kitchen. This is my family. Tilly. Jack. Holly. Megan. And of course, my wife Tana. You may think you're the busiest person in the world, but over this series, I'm going to prove it's still possible to cook stunning food at home. My rules are simple. Home cooking has to be easy. It's got to be fast. It's got to be delicious. So if you think you can't cook amazing food at home, think again. These are the only recipes you'll ever need. Breakfast, lunch and dinner. I love cooking for mates, but I never make the mistake of doing complicated, formal food. Who wants to be stressed out on the time off? However, I do have a reputation to keep up, so the food has got to be good. Whether it's breakfast, brunch, lunch or dinner, here's my ultimate food for friends. Having people over for a bit of a late breakfast or brunch at the weekend is a brilliant way to catch up with friends, and this dish is always a winner. Gorgeous griddle polenta with roasted tomatoes and a creamy ghost curd. Can't wait to dive in. Next, a lunch to knock the socks off your mates. Sensational salt baked sea bream with easy braised leeks. And my middle daughter Holly gets her hands dirty in the kitchen as we cook a super simple dinner. Ew, it's yucky. Guaranteed to be a hit with all your loved ones. Stunning roast chicken stuffed with aromatic chickpeas. A beautiful big green salad. And an amazing chocolate and hazelnut meringue tower. Really good. Nice to see Holly get her hands dirty, all right? I think we all agree. <laughs> huh? This is my ultimate food for friends. Breakfast, lunch and dinner. First, a sophisticated late breakfast or brunch dish to impress your mates. Easy griddled polenta with delicious roasted tomatoes and creamy goat's curd. Now, polenta to the Italians is what mashed potato is to Britons. A staple, incredibly delicious and really straightforward to do. Now, season the water. Just a little touch of olive oil stops it from becoming too sticky. I love polenta. It's a cornmeal made from ground dried maize. The more coarse, the longer it takes to cook. But you can also buy instant polenta, which is ready in under 10 minutes. And I always use this at home. And then whisk that out. As it cooks out, it naturally thickens. You see the grains becoming almost into one nice, fine, pureed polenta. To take the polenta to another level, flavour-wise, season with salt and pepper, a good knob of butter and parmesan. Be quite generous with the parmesan because polenta can be quite dull. I like it quite rich and creamy. Delicious. Now, mix that in. So, a nice, smooth, shiny, glossy polenta. You can eat polenta two ways. Like this, it's a glorious fluffy mash, or set, then griddled, which is what I'm doing. Start by oiling a baking tray, pour in your polenta. Now, get that in the fridge and let it set. Next, I'm roasting vine tomatoes to really intensify their flavour. Olive oil on the bottom of the tray and drizzle extra virgin olive oil on top. Nip your tomatoes with your scissors. If you didn't burst them before they went in the oven, they'd explode. Salt and pepper. Garlic. Just squeeze the juice out of the garlic. So as the tomatoes blister and roast, it's going to take on all this lovely garlic. To give the tomatoes a wonderful sweet and sour flavour, a pinch of sugar and balsamic vinegar. This is a wonderful aged balsamic vinegar. And then some thyme. Don't pick the thyme. Just trim it like you're having a little haircut. Nice. The tomatoes only take 10 minutes to roast. Now the polenta's set, it's ready to griddle. It should just fall out. Beautiful. Polenta's a nice garnish for grilled meats. It's great when you're planning a big dinner party. The polenta can be done one or two days before. A nice season. Top and bottom. A nice sort of coating of olive oil and then onto your grill. Now, this looks very impressive, but it's so easy to do. Get that grill really nice and hot. Make sure you've got a fish slice and go underneath to turn. All that nice sort of marking and char in the blender gives that really nice flavour. 
Now, tomatoes. Look, you've got these beautiful vine tomatoes that have been roasted and all that wonderful flavour. Now, get your little tomatoes and just sit them on top. Drizzle over any remaining roasting juices. The perfect addition is a goat's curd. Goat's curd gives it that nice sort of salty, creamy taste. Goat's cheese, cream cheese or creme fraiche will work just as well. Drizzle. A little touch of that aged basket vinegar. And then a little basil. I can't wait to dive in. This dish is fantastic when you're entertaining in the morning. Set your plate the night before, and you can have this casual brunch on the table within minutes. Fuss-free cooking that looks like a labour of love. Coming up, I've got some great lunch and dinner recipes when you're cooking for a crowd. But first, here's a closer look at some of the key ingredients you'll need to impress your friends. To keep your guests sweet, here's some of the most common sugars and what they're best for. Almost sticky muscovado sugar, rich and treacly in flavour, is great in biscuits, fruitcakes and pickles. Powdery icing sugar dissolves without heat, making it perfect for butter, creams and icing. Palm sugar, made from the palm tree sap, is generally sold as a paste and brings caramelly flavours to sweet and savoury dishes. The secret to the meringue I'm serving my mates for dinner is caster sugar. Partway between granulated and icing sugar in size. It dissolves well, it's the ultimate sugar for baking. For the main course, I'm using corn-fed chicken. You can buy them everywhere. They're great value, they have a lovely colour and a rich flavour. And with an incredible stuffing, roast chicken's guaranteed to be a crown pleaser. Sea bream, and I think the gilt head variety, with its Disco Diva gold flash, is the most flavoursome. To check it's fresh, its eyes should be bright, gills red and scales shiny. Bream's great poached, grilled or pan-fried, but I'm going to bake it in a salt crust for my ultimate lunch for friends. When I'm cooking lunch for a crowd of my friends, my policy is to keep it simple and think big. So, instead of making lots of little things, I usually cook a whole fish or a large joint of delicious meat. That way, there's always plenty to go around. Now, you can have this prepared and in the oven before any of your guests arrive. It looks super impressive, especially when you bring it to the table. This is my ultimate lunch for friends. Salt-crusted sea bream served with braised leeks and hazelnuts. First job is that salt crust. This dish looks intimidating, but it is actually very straightforward and very easy. Make sure the guts are out and the fish is clean. The most important thing is always leaving the skin and the scales on. That skin protects the actual flesh from becoming salty. Give the fish a really nice seasoning inside. Even though we're putting a salt crust on the outside, it's still very important to season the middle. Fennel seeds goes brilliantly well with fish. And then slice the lemon. Nice, large, thick slices, the zest and the lemon bakes inside the fish. Fold over the fish and just squeeze the juice. Now, for the salt, about 150 ml to 200 ml of water. What you're trying to do now is just bring the salt together. And you want to sort of end up with a bowl of salt that looks almost like snow. You'll need about two kilos of salt for this, and it doesn't need to be the fancy stuff. Even though you're using a lot of it, it won't make the fish salty. Instead, the crust forms a kiln that retains moisture. Now, basically, a nice bed of salt underneath. Flatten it down. Lay the fish on top of the salt. Get your salt and just start packing. You can salt crust almost any fish, from sea bass to salmon or flatfish like sole, but it's not great with oily fish. Now, it looks like a ridiculous amount of salt, but it's really important to cover all the fish because you want that nice shell. And the minute salt hits the oven, it sort of tightens up and forms this large crust. 
That goes in at 180 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. Whilst the fish cooks, it's onto my beautiful braised leeks. Splash of olive oil. Leek is a very sort of firm, robust vegetable, so it can take a really nice sear. The most exciting thing about these leeks, A, they go beautifully with the sea bream, but braised leeks, coloured properly with a lot of flavour on there, taste absolutely delicious. Take a couple of cloves of garlic and just crush them in with the leeks. Some fresh thyme. Get some butter in there. Braising them in butter and white wine gives them the most amazing flavour. Braising is a chefy term for searing at a high temperature, then cooking with a bit of liquid. Bring that up to the boil. And then the rest of your butter. Now, as the white wine reduces down, the flavour of the leeks intensify and they glaze. Turn it down. Just leave that little gap there. If we totally covered it, then you're going to get all that condensation from underneath the lid. And it'll just make the leeks watery. The leeks will take about 12 minutes to cook. So now for the garnish. Roasted hazelnuts. They'll be roasted in the oven. Very brittle, very firm. So get them inside. Pestle and mortar. Bit of seasoning. And just crush your nuts. Don't over pound them. I just want this nice sort of rustic, chopped, toasted hazelnuts. Now, get your knife. You want that going through with ease. And turn off the gas. I absolutely adore them. Like stunning little parcels. Soft and slightly creamy. Now, baste the leeks with the remaining butter. Spread your flat leaf parsley over generously. And then just sprinkle the toasted hazelnuts. The combination of that earthiness from the leeks, the roasted flavour from the hazelnuts, that is a stunning way of eating leeks. And now for the fish. And look, now you just gently tap the top and it starts falling away. You can just see that beautiful shine carefully lift off the salt. Now peel that skin. Look how juicy and succulent that sea bream is. Stays incredibly moist. The other great thing about cooking whole fish like this, it makes it so easy to fill it. Take your spoon, run that down through the top, and the fish will just slide off there. Now, just push back that lovely fillet, and look, that is cooked beautifully. And that's what keeps them coming back for more, and more, and more. When you have friends over, you want to keep lunch relaxed, laid back, but impressive and a salt crust bream with beautiful braised leeks is just that. Coming up, it's dinner time, and middle daughter Holly is getting her hands dirty. Push down. <laughs> and we've got an amazing chickpea stuffed chicken guaranteed to win your friends over. I love chickpeas, because uh -huh. I like peas from chicks. <laughs> One of the things I've learned about running successful restaurants over the past 20 odd years is it's not just the food that keeps people coming back. You need to create a great atmosphere too, and it's the same at home. My ultimate dinner for friends is utterly delicious, but it keeps things simple and easy in the kitchen. And helping me in the kitchen, proving this dinner's child's play to make is middle daughter Holly. First job get the chicken stuffed and roasting. Now, we all know you love chicken. I do. But what we're going to do is a way that Daddy used to eat it in Paris, OK? Now, I'm going to hold that up, OK? Season inside, please. Why is it yellow? Because it's a corn-fed chicken. Obviously, it eats corn, and if you eat lots of corn... Turn yellow. Turn yellow. Now, what are those? Chickpeas. Chickpeas, yeah. Have a little taste. Nice? Yeah. We're going to make them taste even better. Salt, pepper in there as well, please. Now, chilies. When you hear that noise, what does that mean? The seeds have come out. That's right. Take off the tops. And we're going to add the chilies to the chickpeas. In. And then zest the lemon in there, please. You love your zest. I love my zest. You're absolutely right. A little glug of olive oil. Come on, Holes. Don't worry about your nails now. 
Come on, baby, you can do it. Now, time. You peel off all those wonderful little buds. See? So, as we stuff the chicken with the fresh thyme, the chickpeas become sort of fat and juicy from all that wonderful flavour. Chickpea stuffing done. Next, we're going to make the herb butter to flavour the skin. Now, what's that? Tarragon. What's this? Mmm. Slightly vinegary? Yeah? Yeah. A little bit aniseedy? Yeah. So, imagine that flavour going into the chicken. That's going to be delicious. Now, nice soft butter in with the tarragon. Mmm. Mm. Is that lovely? Yeah. Now, I want you gently to put your fingers through there and just so we can get that butter under there, but I need those small, beautiful little hands. Down. Ew. What's wrong? <laughs> it's yucky. Come on, Holes. Nice, well done. I want you to get a nice handful of butter. Ew. Lift your hand up and push under. Good. Now, see that there? Yeah. You push that all the way down there and you let that slide. And that's how you get all that wonderful, yeah, butter running down. And the breasts stay nice and moist. And I'd like you, yeah, to put all those chickpeas in there. Nice. Your hands have never been so dirty, have they? No. Here we go. Good. And push down. <laughs> Come on. OK. Now, place my lemon in there. Right? Take your garlic. Shall I wash my hands? No. Not yet. We lay the garlic onto the tray. Now, onto the garlic. Salt, pepper, make the skin nice and crispy. And then I'm just going to drizzle some olive oil. That will stop the butter from burning. And look at that. Please open the oven door. Thank you, my darling. In she goes. <laughs> Beautiful. Good job. Thank you. Really good. Nice to see Holly get her hands dirty, you right? I think we all agree. <laughs> uh? For dessert, it's an incredible but easy hazelnut meringue tower guaranteed to wow your mates. Start with a basic meringue. Separate four egg whites and whisk. Gradually add caster sugar until the mix forms stiff, glossy peaks. Gently fold in ground and chopped hazelnuts. A trick we use in the restaurants is to use the mix to stick baking sheets down, which makes them easy to spread and stops the sheets blowing around. Top your meringues with more finely chopped hazelnuts and bake for 25 minutes. And the trick to stop them cracking is to turn the oven off and let them cool inside. For the filling, melt dark chocolate in a bowl over simmering water and slightly cool. Whip the cream until it forms soft peaks and gently fold in three quarters of the melted chocolate until combined. Build your tower with alternate layers of chocolate cream and meringue. Finally, drizzle over the remaining melted chocolate to decorate. A simple yet luxurious dessert your friends will love, but be warned, they'll all want second helpings. The chicken's in the oven and the dessert's sorted. Now for a big, easy green salad. So, let's start off with one nice tablespoon Dijon. Say Dijon. 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 A nice little squeeze of honey. Love honey. Yes. A little splash of aged. Balsamic. Yeah, now this is your favourite, this one, isn't it? Mm. I just like the... It has a nice sweetness, but then it has a bitterness to it, too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Next to virgin olive oil. Why do we have to use a whisk, not just a spoon? The purpose of using a whisk is so it can emulsify. But more importantly, you're bringing all the ingredients together. Taste? Mmm. It's so yummy. That is delicious, isn't it? A good tip to loosen any vinaigrette and give it a lighter taste is to add a spot of water. Now, the juice of a lemon. Squeeze the lemon in. Nice. Now, use some butter lettuce. Start placing the salad around the outside. This one is a Lalo Rosso. OK. So we'll put that one on the inside. 
was sort of making a nice flower. And you put your heart in there. Oh, so, it's like a flower. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. A nice, beautiful flower. Now, from there, you crisscross your avocado. What does crisscrossing do instead of just slicing down? That? I'll show you now. You put your spoon in there and look. That's so cool. So all these nice little bits. I want you to sprinkle those little bits in here. I'm telling you, that first dinner you cook for your boyfriend is going to be extraordinary. Yeah. That romantic dinner, the roast chicken, the beautiful salad, OK? Yeah. To the way your father taught you. And how nice will that be? All three of us sat down eating at the same time. Very nice. Are you going to do that with Megan? All of you. All of you. And I'd grab the chicken. OK. Now, look at this beauty. <gasps> that looks amazing. Doesn't it? Right, so, a little bit of salad. Drizzle that. Drip, drip, drip. Nice. What I'm going to do now is squeeze all that garlic out. See how soft mm. and beautiful it, it is? It smells amazing. The lemon that we stuffed inside the chicken, roasted. What we do now is just squeeze all that through with that nice <laughs> garlic puree. I'll tip all my chickpeas. Mm. In there. From there, some of your vinegar. In. Now you crush them. And because they're still nice and hot, they absorb all that wonderful garlic and lemon puree, the rich, delicious, creamy vinaigrette, the chilies. I can guarantee you, young lady, that they are the best, the finest, the most delicious chickpeas you've ever tasted. Mm. Go on, then. It's yummy. <laughs> right. In. Now, it will drizzle. Extra virgin olive oil over them. Beautifully done. Mm. On. Chickpeas. And that is a roast chicken fit for a king, darling. This looks really yummy. Why don't you pass the salad out, please? And I'll carve the chicken. Whole roast chicken stuffed with chickpeas. So with a big green salad, it's always a winner with your buddies, workmates, or family. Chickpeas are really, really rich with bread. Mm -hmm. Stuffing is amazing. I love chickpeas because they're like peas from chicks. <laughs> well done, Holes. Well done, Holly. Your first chicken recipe for you and your boyfriend. Cheers. To collect selected recipes from the show, go to my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash Gordon. Next time, I'm teaching my son Jack to cook up his favourite recipe. How many wings do you think you've eaten so far? Probably 50 a year. And we prove you only have to travel as far as your kitchen to create authentic Southeast Asian flavours. Oh, wow.